Hey everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs and another episode of the Baby Lock Ovation Surgery Manual. Today I'm super excited because I'm working on my new yoga pants pattern. And if you're part of my pattern perfection group on Facebook, I put a poll up to choose the best name for this new pattern. I came up with um, the Trident Yoga Pants. And then some of my members came up with other ideas that they thought were good, so I collected them all and I made a poll. So if you go to the bottom of the video, I put a link to my Pattern Perfection group. Um, if you're not a member, please join us. We have so much fun in there. And if you want to chime in on your favorite um, name, this is the uh, yoga pants I have in front of me. That's the back. And this is the front. And I actually just took them off. I have been wearing them since I finished them. And as a matter of fact, I was so excited about them. You can see here, I didn't even finish the hem yet because I didn't want to take them off. They are so comfortable. But the reason why I'm showing you these today is because I want to show you how to do a reverse flat lock. Um, it's one of my favorite stitches because it actually allows the seam allowance to slide and lay flat um, and it adds a really nice little decorative detail. You can see here I used a metallic woolly nylon and then over here I just used a black woolly nylon for the center back seam and I also used um, black to seam together the waistband. It's hard to see because it's black on black but then I and I also used it to attach the waist. And the reason why I like this stitch, especially for active wear, is because it slides pretty flat and you don't feel it when you're wearing it. Um, I think it makes it more comfortable. So I want to talk about and show you how to do this. Now a reverse flat lock is really just the underside of a flat lock stitch. And in the um, Ovation Serger Manual, on page 36 and 37, there's instructions for a two thread flat lock. And it's interesting to note for the needle, they actually thread it through um, a looper and not a needle path. So we're gonna actually do a three thread wide flat lock. What's interesting about this is the threads that you see on the reverse flat lock are the needle thread. So we are actually gonna put decorative thread in our needle and you could imagine if you need to have that slide and open then there really can't be very much tension on that needle thread. So that's the trick to doing a reverse flat lock or a flat lock for that matter. You have to have a loose um, needle thread for the stitch to slide flat when you pull it open. And I'm going to show you how to do that. These are some woolly nylons I have in my stash. I love them because, you know, they add some sparkle to my projects. This is a plain black, but these are the versions of the metallic I have. And this black and silver is what I used for my yoga pants. One of the benefits of using a metallic woolly nylon is the metallic fibers create a thread that isn't as puffy. So you can see even a relaxed and relaxed um, state it's not very puffy and it still has give so it still stretches um, not quite as much as a woolly nylon the woolly nylon is very puffy when it without the metallic okay so and it has a lot more give to it because there's no metallic fibers in there to you know sort of stifle some of the stretch so that's interesting to note and that's another reason why I did the non-metallic down the center back seam just to give it a little extra security. All right, I think I'll just give you a quick overview of how to thread the machine for a uh, three thread wide flat lock. I'm gonna start with the loopers. So I'll start with the lower looper and I'm just clicking it in there. Oops, in there. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just get my upper looper as well to that point. All right, so now I've got to put them in my thread ports, but remember we have to switch it to threading. And I'm gonna turn the hand wheel slowly until it locks in place. All right, you hear that click? And now I'm gonna just put a thread, I'll start with the lower looper, into the thread port. And then I'm gonna press the button and it shot straight through over to here. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my upper looper and let me just stick that in there and I'm going to press the button. 
All right, so did you see how nice and fast that was? I'm still amazed how wonderful this threading system works. All right, so I've got my th upper threads done. Now, if for the needle, I have, um, I'm gonna switch off threading so I can turn my hand wheel. For the, um, for the needle, I have it in the 01 or the left needle position. And I just wanna show you, remember I said we don't want a lot of tension on the needle so it will slide open when we open it. I actually put a piece of scotch tape right here and that's gonna prevent the thread from going in the tension disc at all. Because sometimes on my machine, if I try to use it as is, I can't get it to open as much as I'd like. Um, even if I did it the way it shows in the book for a two thread. So I'm gonna just click it in and I'm just gonna let it hang over. I position the, the tape right here up front because that keeps it from going into the tension disc. And then I'm just gonna thread it as normal. Because I'm working with wooly nylon, it could be a little bit difficult to thread the needle. So the way I like to do that is I just take a piece of my regular thread. I'll just pull it off of one of these loopers and it doesn't need to be very large, maybe, you know, eight inches. And to have room to show you, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lower my upper looper so it's out of place, out of the way I mean. So now I have a lot of room in there. I'm gonna put the presser foot down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread through the eye of the needle. Okay, so see I've threaded just my little piece through the needle. Then I'm gonna hold it taut like that. So I've got it held taut between my thumb and my other finger, and I'm just gonna thread it through the hole again. This is why I like to put the upper looper down because then it's out of the way and I can get in there. All right, so see how now I've got this loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, woolly nylon, and I'm actually going to put it through the loop and then I'll pull it through and that way it's easy to get it through the eye of the needle. All right, so there we are. And then I'll just pull my loop through. You can see now my woolly nylon is threaded in the needle. All right, so now that I have my needle threaded, I'm just gonna put my upper looper back up it's important to remember to do that if you've put it down to make it easier to thread. So I'm just gonna click that back on up and turn the hand wheel till it pops back up. I'm just gonna put all my threads under here and I'm pulling them to make sure everything is going smooth. Then I'm gonna close all my doors and I'm just gonna try it on a scrap. My stitch length is about three and a half. My cutting width is at 5.5, I don't want a ton of um, fabric in between where it cuts and where the needle is because I want it to lay flat. So now if I were like doing a garment, I'd have my right sides together because I want to see what's in the right side. That's important for a reverse flat lock. So right sides together for a reverse flat lock. And I'm just going to stitch along. I'm just going to keep my edges together. So this would be like exactly like if we were just stitching an overlock stitch at this point. Okay, so this would be my wrong sides face out, right sides together. So I'm opening it to the right side and I'm just going to pull. And you can see I get those nice ladders. See how nice that is? I'll tell you what this stitch is great for. If you're seaming, um, if you're making a gourd skirt out of silk charmeuse, this stitch is like heaven. It, it makes easy work of sewing silk charmeuse. So that's another um, fabric I love using this with. All right, so there's my reverse flat lock. All right, I also wanna show you with a three thread wide flat lock, lock look, look, la, that's a tongue twister. I also wanna show you what the three thread wide flat lock looks like and that you sew it with the fabrics in the other direction. So when you do your your flat lock, you want to have right sides face out, and we're changing the decorative thread from the needle for the regular flat lock, we're putting it in the upper looper. 
Okay, so I've already switched them so you don't have to watch me do that. But basically I threaded the, you know, I just clipped them and tied them and pulled them through. So the, um, the decorative thread is now in the upper looper and the fabric is right sides face out. And the way you can tell if you're doing this properly is when you look at your stitch after you stitch it, the decorative thread should be where you can see it. I'm keeping my thread, we still need that, that needle thread to spread open, so I still have my scotch tape up there. All I did was switch the threads. Now the regular flat lock, you can see here, this is the right side of my fabric, and you can see my decorative thread. So when I pull this open, this is gonna be on the top, and it's gonna slide flat, and this is what's gonna show. So. I'm gonna open this up, and as I pull, notice it slides flat, and my decorative thread is showing in the upper looper. So see how nice that looks? So this would be more if you wanted a big shiny impact with a metallic thread, you know, if you really wanted it to show and the reverse flat lock is a little bit more subtle. So that's, um, that's the difference between reverse flat lock and regular flat lock using the decorative thread to the advantage of seeing it. Um, if I turn this to the wrong side, you can see now I have the reverse flat lock, but it's just regular thread there now. All right, so that's my little how to do a reverse flat lock. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below or you can visit my blog at Stern Designs. If you wanna chime in and vote for the name of my new yoga pants pattern, please join us at J. Stern Designs Fitting and per Pattern Perfection Group on Facebook. Click the link below. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next week.